Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Frailino and welcome to the LogicWorks Managed AWS DevOps demo. Today we're gonna walk through some of the best practices that we employ with all of our AWS deployments um, that accounts for scaling up and down to match demand with capacity. So you have the resources you need when you need them, but you're not over provisioning. And uh, this also will represent a self healing architecture. So we're gonna start by walking through with this demo tool, we have a, a generalized dual region deployment here in US East and US West. And if we zoom in, we can see our one region on the left and one region on the right. So basically with these AWS tools, we can automate uh, the ad addition of new instances to any region to accommodate for increases in demand. We can also automate failover either between regions so that if this region is wiped out, we can accommodate uh, with another region. And we can also do the same thing between availability zones. So if we dive in and look, these orange lines, orange dotted lines represent different availability zones. And so we're taking your assets, your web tier, your database tier, and your application tier, and we're distributing them across AZs such that if any single availability zone is wiped out, we have resources from every tier in a different availability zone, meaning a different geographic location. Um, and we have them in auto scaling groups, so they're set up to automatically compensate for that loss in resources. So we're gonna focus on this region for the sake of simplicity. Um, but with, let's state, take a step back and look at some of the best practices that we always employ. So first, we start with a cloud formation template. And what this template allows us to do is minimize stand up time for your application. So um, within that cloud formation template, we're doing things like setting up a VPC with multiple subnets, the addition of a NAT gateway, um, some basic security procedures that, that we bring to the table. And then we take that cloud formation template and we further customize it for your environment. So what we're really doing is making your environment more portable. So if you need to replicate this environment for the addition of a new client that maybe wants to run its application as a standalone application in the cloud, uh, we can do that in a matter of hours, not days. Same if you need to deploy your application in a, in a totally different geographic region, say in Australia, if you're running in the United States. Again, we can do that in a matter of hours and not days. So we're really making your application much more portable. Um, as I said, everything we do goes into an auto-scaling group, and that accounts for elasticity, as well as even if it's a single instance, if it goes down, we want to automatically spin it back up without the need for human intervention. Uh, another thing we have is a utility server, and the utility server has a few different jobs. Its first job is to, in an automated fashion, provide a complete inventory of your environment with snapshot backups that are shipped to S3 on a regular basis. Um, another thing it does is, is we house our configuration management tools there. So those can be custom scripts, those can be our puppet scripts, things like that. Um, but that comes into play with our auto-scaling events. Um, another thing we do is we assign identity access management roles. And the job of roles to, is to eliminate the storage of useful long-term credentials from within the environment. So basically, with any AWS environment, you have your master security keys but you don't want to put those security keys in the environment itself. What you want to do is use limited temporary security credential handouts for every API endpoint call. So, for example, if there's something within the application that needs to pull down data from a specific S3 bucket, you want the credentials for that action to be limited to strictly that action so that if somebody um, were to obtain those security keys, um, they're only able to pull down code from an S3 bucket for a very limited amount of time until those security credentials are then rotated out for new ones. Um, so again, it's just some security best practices that you can bake into the AWS environment itself. Another thing we do is we, we build in the launch configuration, custom code, and user data into the AWS environment for you. And we also... Um, build these vanilla AMIs for your template, or for template AMIs. So what that means is rather than fully customizing these AMIs to replace instances when auto-scaling events occur, what we're doing is we're keeping these as vanilla as possible such that we're adding new code and updates and patches to them when they're introduced to the environment. So if you're pushing code often, um, what this means is you don't have to come in and update these AMIs every time you push code, right? We can automate that process uh, via custom scripts on our, our configuration server. Um, another thing we're doing is we're 
hooking in enterprise level monitoring to this environment. So that gets plugged into our 24 by seven network operations center in Manhattan. And we also use that to provide custom reporting for you and give you guys um, access to monitoring of your complete environment. So that integrates with uh, CloudWatch and gives a much more rich historical analysis and detail of the metrics of your environment itself. So like I said, we wanna walk through uh, basically what happens if we need to scale up to account for increases in capacity and requests. And we also wanna walk through the processes that uh, will occur if um, any availability zone or any instances are lost due to failure. So those are kind of the same processes. So we're gonna look at it in terms of auto scaling for capacity versus demand. And up here you can see we have, you know, this is, a, this is a Cyber Monday scenario. It's early in the morning and we have much more capacity than we need to handle our requests. But at 717, what happens is we configure a CloudWatch alarm to trigger an auto scaling event. Um, if at 722 those, uh, that threshold is sustained, we trigger an auto scaling event, which um, alerts our knock, and at 725, incorporates the utility node and the AMIs. And what matters is that at 730, you have the bump in capacity you need to match uh, the capacity to the request you're receiving. So let's unpack what happened during that auto scaling event. Um, so we've built the user data into the environment of the auto scaling group such that when something comes up, it self configures, right? So this is replacing all of the work a sysadmin would do to manually add capacity. We've automated that um, without human intervention. So when that happens, the new instances boot from our AMIs. We put access keys into the environment so we can properly connect them to the rest of the environment. We're running scripts on them to change host names to apply tags to the environment so they're identifiable. We're installing packages that need to be installed to support the application. We're slurping down code from an S3 bucket or repository to put that code into the instance. We're pulling down monitoring scripts to push CloudWatch data from that instance. And we're kicking off registration of the instance with the Puppet Master. So we've anticipated all of this and via custom scripting in DevOps have um, automated it ahead of time so that when scaling events do need to occur, there does not need to be human intervention but you're still able to be dynamic with your application and change it very easily over time. So um, all the while, the Elastic Load Balancer is performing health checks to see if these new instances are ready um, to serve traffic. So it takes a little bit for all those events to occur, but the whole time the ELB is checking for a particular URL, so when everything is finally ready, it adds the new in instance into the load balancing pool, and that's what triggers your bump in capacity. So if you're an e-commerce site or um, something that has heavy user traffic during the day but not at night, your auto-scaling events may occur throughout the day. But it's just as important to be able to scale that back down because, again, the idea is to only pay for what you need, to precisely map uh, resource utilization with revenue. So we can set up the same thing for you, right? If we, if we track that your capacity exceeds your requests over a given amount of time, by a given amount, what we can do is trigger auto-scaling events to spin down resources that you no longer need. Um, so in a nutshell, that's both uh, that's DevOps for both high availability and for auto-scaling events. Um, if you have more questions, feel free to visit us at www.logicworks.net. And again, my name is Ryan, and thanks for watching our demo.